Hi, I'm Ryan Sipos. I'm Cade Bowers. I'm Emily Marvicka. And this is Lab 8 Optical Testing with Shear Plate Interferometers. So for the first part of the lab, um, we looked at aberrations using a non-wedge shear plate interferometer, um, which basically takes the incoming light and spatially separates it um, because part of the light will reflect off of the first surface and the other part of the light will reflect off of the rear surface. Um, so if you have um, defocus in your system, that basically creates a parabolic wavefront. And with the spatial separation, you basically have two of those that are interfering with each other. And your fringes are created by the optical path difference between the two wavefronts. Um, so for defocus, you'll see straight fringes that become more separated as you have less defocus. Um, but for tilt, if you have tilt in your system, that wavefront is basically just a straight line. So when you have um, the separated wavefront, there's actually no optical path difference, so you don't see any fringes. So if you want to see tilt, you have to add defocus into the system as you're adding tilt, and you'll see the fringes move, but with no defocus, you won't see anything. So our setup for the non-wedge shear plate interferometer, we had our laser, which was spatially expanded through a spatial filter. Then we had our collimating lens, which we had an X and Y translation, so we could just decenter and defocus. And then that hit our non-wedged shear plate, and then that reflected off to a diffuse plate so that we could actually see what was happening. To maximize spherical aberration, where it is right now, we had the flat side towards collimation, and then we could flip our lens around to minimize the spherical aberration. So when the lens was oriented to maximize spherical aberration, we took our theoretical plots of what we would expect and what we got from our best focus position on the plate. So as you can see here at best focus, it matches pretty closely. At before focus and then at after focus, we also get similar values to what we'd expect. So in this part of the lab, um, so it's a little bit different. We have our beam expander on this primary rail that's used to expand the beam to fill out this fold mirror, which bends the beam into this wedge shear plate interferometer, um, which we use to test these two optics. So for the first part, we're testing the mirror, and um, this lens is the reference surface, and it's oriented such that the spherical aberration is minimized. And for the second part of, the, um, of this part of the lab, we want to test the reference lens, so we spin it around and have it maximize spherical aberration, and then the mirror actually becomes the reference surface. This picture represents the target of the interferogram, um, where the black circle represents the original wavefront and the red circle represents the sheared wavefront. Um, for the non-wedged shear plate, um, this, this amount of distance here that uh, represents the overlap is uh, caused by this OPD, um, which is the uh, first original wavefront uh, minus the uh, sheared wavefront. Um, the non-wedged shear plate follows this basic form, and when we change it to a wedged shear plate, in the orthogonal direction, there is a uh, beta wedge angle shift, which causes a 2 times the index of refraction times the wedge angle um, shift in the wavefront, which contributes to this extra amount of uh, shear in the OPD. For a system at best focus with no aberrations present, the two incoming wavefronts will be stacked on top of each other, um, and with uh, a non-wedged interferometer, they're going to have a constant OPD inside. With a wedge, um, from a certain perspective, it'll look the same, and we'll have this constant OPD, which will cause these, uh, these fringes. However, based on that wedge angle, there's going to be a slight deviation, uh, which you can see from a different viewpoint, or in this case, a side projection. Um, as soon as you start to add spherical aberration or any of the other uh, higher order aberrations into the system, you're going to start to get curved fringes indicative of which aberration it is. For part F, this is what we have for our best focus position with our setup. And as you can see, the fringes are still a little wiggly, and that's because we still have some spherical aberration left over in the system. When we move past focus, the wavefront tilts to one side, as you can see. And then when we are before the focus, the wavefront tilts to the other side. For part G, for testing the lens with the wedge shear plate interferometer, when we oriented the lens in terms of maximum spherical aberration, you see this S pattern at best focus. And then you see this pattern when we were past focus. And this pattern when we were before focus.